What is going on guys welcome back to the go programming tutorial series in today's video we're going to talk about pointers so let us get right into it all right so we're going to talk about pointers in the go language and pointers are basically just objects or entities that point to the memory address of other objects or entities so pointers in go are not as essential and important to the language as it is the case for a language like c or c for example where we need pointers for the most basic things all the time in Go, we don't need pointers for everything, but we can use them and they allow us to do things that we could not do without pointers. So let's look at a quick example. Let's say I have a variable a here, which is an integer, and I say a equals 10, for example. Now, what I can do, obviously, is I can go ahead and say fmt print line a. And of course, I'm going to get 10. I'm just printing the value of a simple variable. Nothing too special about it. Uh, now, let's say I don't want to know what A is or what the value of A is. I want to know where A is stored in the memory. I want to get the memory address. If I want to get that, I have to use the AND operator here. So this is just the basic AND operator, the referencing operator. Uh, this is going to give me the memory address. So if I run this, you're going to see that I get something that looks like a memory address. It's a hexadecimal number. Uh, this is the memory address of this particular variable. So if I now store this address into a variable, this is going to be called a pointer. So if I say, for example, PTR for pointer is and a, this is now the same thing, but I'm storing it in a variable. So I can go ahead here and I can pass PTR and I'm going to get the same result, not necessarily the same memory address or maybe even the same memory address. No, not the same memory address because it's just different this time. Uh, that doesn't have to do anything with the variable here. This is just because the memory address changes. Um, but as you can see, I can do the same thing. And I can also go ahead and dereference that pointer because this pointer is now pointing to the memory address of A. If I want to have the value using that pointer, I can just dereference that pointer using that operator here, and I can get the value of A or the value of the thing that this pointer is pointing to. So if I run this, you're going to see that I get 10. All right, so why is this important and why is this useful? This is useful because of a call by reference. I can do a call by reference using a reference or a pointer, which is very different from a call by value. So let's go ahead and say I have two functions. One function is going to be called change and it's going to accept the value. So I'm going to call it change value. It's not going to actually, I mean, it, it is going to change the value, but uh, the name is chosen because it's going to change something and we're going to pass a value to it. So we're going to say change value and it's going to get a value, which is going to be an integer and it's going to do something with that integer. So then I also have a second function, which is going to be called change reference. It is not going to change the reference. It is going to change the value, but it's going to get a reference as a parameter or a pointer as a parameter. So we're going to call this change reference. And here we're going to not get just a value. We're going to get uh, an integer pointer. This is how you specify that as a parameter type we say this is going to be an integer pointer, a pointer to an integer, and we're going to do something here. All right, so if I now go ahead here, I can, in both functions, I can go ahead and just print the value. So if I do print line, and then I say value, and print line value, that is not going to make a difference. I'm going to be able, I mean, maybe I'm going to have to re dereference that, but besides that, I can do the reading operation without any problems. So if I call change value and I have a variable here, let's say again, var a int a equals 10, and I pass a here, change value, change reference, I have to pass the reference to a. There you go. So we get the memory address here, but I can dereference it. And you can see that I can do both things. Uh, I can do the same thing with both functions. So that's not a problem. Reading is actually the same. I can print 10 and I can print 10. Now, what happens if I actually want to change something? What happens if I actually want to change the value of this past value? So if I'm not passing a constant, I'm passing a variable. So here, I'm passing a, which is 10. And here I'm passing a reference to a. 
So if I change the value of a, what's going to happen? Let's see. If I say value equals 200 here, for example, is this going to work or is this not going to work? We don't get any compiler errors. We just don't know yet. And I can do the same thing here. And I can say value equals 200. Or actually, so that we can distinguish it, I'm going to say equals 500. And I'm going to only call one of those. So I'm going to call change value. We started with a variable a. Uh, what do we have here now? Cannot be represented by the time. Oh, yeah, of course, we need to use the star here. There you go, dereferencing. So what we do here is we have a variable a, which is an integer, we set this value to 10. And then we pass that value as a value, not as a reference to the change value function, which sets that value to 200. Now, if we change the value, and I then try to print a, is this going to be changed or not? I need to import FMT, there you go. And if I run this right now, you're going to see that a is not going to be changed. It was 10 before that, and it's going to be 10 after that. I can do this again, one time before that, one time after that. <clears throat> you're going to see, even though I change something to 200 here, it is going to remain 10. Now, if I print the value in here, so if I say fmt.println value inside of that function here, you're going to see that it actually is 200. So this value changes, but a does not change because this value changes only in the scope of that function. Because what we do here is we're not passing a as an object, we're passing the value of a, we're copying the value, we're saying, okay, a is 10. And yes, I'm passing a, but I'm not passing the actual variable a, I'm not passing the object a into the function, I am passing the value of a and you can do with that value, whatever you like, but a is still a. If I want to actually do something with a itself, I need to pass the reference to a this is what I do with the change reference. So if I do change reference here, and I pass not a but a reference to a, you can see, let me just remove that print statement here, you will be able to see that a enters the function with the value 10 and leaves it with the value 500. Why? Because we're not just copying a, we're not passing the value of a and that's it. We're passing the actual memory address of a. We're passing the location of this specific object, which is going to be then dereferenced inside of the function. And we're going to set the value of not the parameter, we're going to set the value of the actual value uh, of the actual object in that memory location. And this is why we can change it when we do a call by reference, and we cannot change it when we do a call by value. Now, I also want to show you one more thing, which is how you can define pointers using the var keyword. If you want to define a pointer and not set it yet, you just say var ptr, and then you use the dereferencing operator. So star int, and that's your pointer. Then if you have something like a equals 10, you can then go ahead and say ptr equals and a like that. And you can do whatever you want with that. Uh, you can just go ahead and say fmt dot print line ptr. This is not the right module. There you go. So we can do that. And also one thing that I want to show you. Uh, now I don't know if you're going to need this in this tutorial series, but we can also have a pointer that points to a pointer because the pointer itself is just a variable. So the pointer itself is also an object in the memory. So we can point to a pointer. And in order to do that, we can just go ahead and create a pointer pointer, which is going to be var pptr pointer pointer. And this is going to just be two stars here. So pointer to an integer pointer. Um, and if I want to set this, I'm just going to say pptr equals and ptr. And I can go ahead and print this as well. This is just going to be the value of uh, this is just going to be the memory address of the first pointer. So this is also something that you can do. And I think we should also be able to dereference it. First of all, if I dereference it one time, I'm going to get the pointer to a. And if I dereference it a second time, I'm going to get the value of a. So if I add two stars here, I'm going to get the value of a. Now I'm not sure if we can do this as long as we want. So why not actually? So if I 
at a lot of more stars, this would also work. But then of course, you would have to have enough pointers. So this is just something that I want to mention that you can do if you need it somewhere, you can do pointers to pointers to pointers to pointers. Uh, you can also use different data types, you can point to point to point to point to string and so on. Uh, so this is also one thing that you can do in Go. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting the like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you very much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.